You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is After Buzz TV's Mad Men After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424 256 1729. That's 424. 424- 256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Mad Men After Show. Mad Men, Mad Men, Mad Men, Mad Men, Mad Men. Bing is for doing it. We are doing <laughs> Very impressed. Very the, impressed. We, we rehearsed that all week long. <laughs> oh, yeah. you, Did you get the harmonies right? We did. You see, I, I had the... Uh, <laughs> we'll, I, I we'll dropped have the, the low and bass there at the I'll end. I'll have the barbershop okay. quartet ready by That's next right. week. We're ready. Backstreet Boys, you turn it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bing is for doing it. We are doing the uh, Mad Men After Show. I'm Joe Braswell. I'm here with... Look, the gangs, we're, we're finally here. This is our group. The gang's Whoa. all here. The gang's this, all this here. Is Sterling Cooper Draper Price. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The Mad Men uh, crew. I be, I'll, I'll be Draper. I want uh, to be Sterling. <laughs> to, to my left, I have Matt Lieberman. Hey, everybody. How you doing? And, and to his left, we have the, the lovely Ka- Catherine... Tulich. 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 Perfect. Thank and you. Uh, Hi, Captain how are Tulich. you? Hello. Hi. And then we have my good friend of 15 years. Oh. The oh. worst looking guy in the world. Absolutely. Yeah. Joe Sanfilippo. Nice to be with you guys. And you- we also have, as our guest producer, the man. The, the one and legend, only. Mr. Phil Woo. Bill Sweetek in the hood. Bill Sweetek. Hello, everybody. I did not see the episode, so I cannot partake. It's okay. Oh, yeah. just, I'm sorry. Sad I, had, I had to shout yeah. you out, Phil. So. Joe and Joe have been friends as long as Joan has been working at the agency. That's right. Yeah. Neither of us are partners, though. Uh, we were, we're certainly not partners. Uh, no? And my boobs are bigger. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't I don't know. <laughs> that makes you more Joni, maybe. So we we are we are here. We are we are knee deep. We're we're well into it's, Mad Men yeah. season six, and you know, and we're it's it's going well here. We have episode well episode four technically. Technically, the third episode. If you go by production order. Production order. If you do that, the two hour premiere was one and two. Yes. Aha. Uh-huh. And then there's three, and then the second <coughs> four. But um, we you know we're we're off and running here. Like this is um you know I. I what is the episode called? The episode's called To Have and To Hold, Ooh. which uh, we, we want to dissect what that means. Ooh, or yeah. Or yeah. Do we at this point? To Have and To Hold. Yeah. We can get into that in a second. The one thing I wanted to just, just to start this thing off with is we, we know, like, from the get-go, from the, from, the, from the beginning of this, from the pilot, I'm sorry, from the pilot, from the, from the um, premiere episode of season six, we got the impression that this is going to be a season about change, about sort of the 60s, the late 60s, culturally catching up to uh, specifically Don, mm-hmm. we thought. But then now it's, it's it's really apparent that it's not just about the culture changing around Dawn. It's really changing about around the agency and around all the individuals in the agency. Because you see that not only Don is Don the only one who some, seems to be sort of uh, in the past a little bit. He's still got his you know his suits and his thing as, as culture's happening around him. But then you see um, Joan actually seems to be a little bit sort of stuck in. The past and and, and, the, and the and the present the the, the, yeah, the kind she, of culture is happening around her. Yeah, she's at a spot where she she didn't look as comfy as she no. normally yeah. did in the bars from from a few seasons ago. Right, and and and, 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 more, and more than that, like I think I feel like all of uh you know uh um Draper, oh my god, Sterling Cooper Price, Price, Braswell. Sterling Cooper Draper Price as as an agency <coughs> seems to be a little behind the times. If you look into that boardroom and you see. You know, you see well, Sterling. Even, well, even Pete Campbell's looking old now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he was the young hotshot. Now yeah. he's looking kind of old-fashioned. Shaving his hairline. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 you see, like, you know, and we'll talk about this later, you see, you see kind of Cosgrove and Crane making their play as sort of like yeah. the guys mm. who want to be progressive. It's it's interesting, Joe, that you bring up that even in that boardroom that they're starting to look older, considering, like, how new and fresh that boardroom looked just three seasons ago yeah. in season four yeah. when we were coming into the new agency out right. of the old Sterling Cooper. Very much so. And now, even even now, that's starting to show its age because things are changing so rapidly 
around them. Um, I just I just want to bring up one thing with uh, with the title to have and to hold. We open on uh, on Don and Pete and Pete's like you know little love cave mm-hmm. of an yeah. apartment yeah. Uh, uptown, and uh, ketchup. Uh, Dude. licks his finger and pulls off his ring within the first sixty seconds of the episode. You sure. know. he's and in Manhattan. <clears throat> sure, oh, uh, any excuse, <laughs> any excuse to, to come. Doesn't take much to get me to come to Manhattan. He's ready to party. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, like, well, the, well. The, the last thing I'll say, and I want to open this up, is that you know, sure. not only are we seeing like you know the agency being you know the, the culture sort of you know passing or, or some sort of enve- enveloping the agency, and Don's looking a little weathered, and Jones looking a little weathered, and Pete's looking a little weathered, and obviously. You know Sterling and Cooper. I mean, Sterling, <laughs> Cooper, Sterling yeah. and Cooper. Yeah. Cooper but they're especially. still cool. I'm yeah, sorry. <laughs> no matter how old they get, they're but still they're, they're cool. So cool. But <laughs> you, you, you also start to see, um, you know, they're in the business of sort of having to sell products to a culture that doesn't want these products. We see that with Dow. So you know, we see Dow is, you know, everyone. The culture is like, we don't want to be sold to this this junk by these these people. It's like, how do we make Dow, the 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 makers of napalm, cool? How do we how do we sell how do we sell these things to people? Before it was easy. We can talk about Lucky Strike and you know and uh, whatever else was going on back then. But now there's some real challenges into sort of selling to a culture that doesn't want to be sold to. So that that's also interesting as well. I don't know. That's, 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 that's and also, I wonder question. at that point. I, I don't know what, what sort of the attitude was to advertising in the late sixties. Whether but people, I imagine people getting fairly cynical about. Well, yeah, you know, yeah. You know, it, yeah. I love listening to uh, some of the older radio shows. It, it was it's a lot of fun to to get like a real uh, to hear some of the old commercials, like you know, from the fifth, the forties and fifties. You know, mm. Lux Flakes, yes, Lux Flakes. Right. And it gives you that soft hands. You know, they yeah. were so blunt. You know, yeah, they were and just they were selling to housewives, and you know, yeah, what I mean. It, it, so I think in the late sixties, you've got a much you, much more, more sophisticated audience, yes. right? Yeah. And 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 they have Far more cynical. Absolutely, well, and you got to find another way to do it. The growing distrust in the establishment in general. You know, um, these big these brands Brands had never really been considered the establishment right. until un, until this period, and I think that you know, Dow Chemical isn't the government, but they are producing the napalm that the government is using right. in Vietnam. And it's that incredible irony, right, that you know that everybody in in every household in America has has Dow Chemical products in it sure. to this Absolutely. day, yeah. and and at the same time, every all the takeaway was in, in 1968 that all they're doing, all all Dow does is make napalm. Yeah. And it, it's it's funny you can see the challenge of it. Well, well the sixties were. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go for it. No, I, well, the sixties were about like the late sixties specifically were about culturally people sort of opening their eyes, right? So it's well, like, a relative handful oh, of people. Well, relative, but still, it was like well, the youth, the young people. Were yeah. Like, wait a minute, these you know, these people are oppressed, and wait a minute, this is you know you can draw that line from Dow Chemical to the government, or you know, or Dow Chemical to you know um, bad things happening in Vietnam, whereas right. before no one really cared, no one really questioned authority or question what was happening or question you know where, where this stuff was coming from and now you have we're at war why are we at war and why why, why can't these people well, eat with us I, I think there's so much there's so much psychologically the difference between com- going to war in 1944 at the end of the depression 1944 i beg your pardon 1942 at the end of the depression you, you know it didn't really matter what it mattered what the reason was i'm not saying it was an easy sell but it was not a, a time of plenty. It was not like the, the country as a whole was doing so hot. I mean, there was right. a relative yeah. handful of people that were doing okay, but everybody else was in, 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 in a tough spot. So the sell for war was relatively simple. But sure. the sell for war in Vietnam, especially a complete war of choice where there was no danger of us being invaded. You know, sounds yeah, familiar. Right, right? <laughs> and, that and, sounds familiar. I, I wonder if there's some crossover. T- 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 I don't oh, know. Oh, jeez. That's some imagination you've got. <laughs> <laughs> but you've Does everyone got, say history repeats? No, right? And it's, uh, ah, it's so frustrating. And the same, the same company still driving the boat. Yes. But it, it's, uh, it's remarkable uh, how, how much harder it is to sell to a, a population that's well-fed and that is doing well and is making money. You know, and, and then you're saying it, all, all this good stuff's happening, but yeah, we got to go invade this country. I think that's a much tougher sell than when things are rough. Right. Yeah. And it changes the whole, the whole dynamic. Well, this is, I mean, and Catherine, this is one of the things that, like, I, well, we all, we, we all love this about Mad Men, but this is one of the things that I love and people talk about is there's really sort of two shows happening here that, that is always great. There's always the, the office drama, with, which is mm-hmm. the, you know, what happens in the office. How these people, how these creative people are selling stuff, and how these creative people are coming up with these ideas, and Don and Peggy in the past, and now Don versus Peggy, are, and what happens in the office, and then there's what happens outside the office, which is sort of this relationship drama and everything else. And I love, you know, I, I don't know which one I love more. I mean, I, I, I really, really love the office stuff. I love all of the 
the ad agency stuff, but it's also interesting to see what happens outside the office. I don't know. Is that what, what, what do you have a? But also how what what's impacting them? That's what I find fascinating too. Right. Like when we're talking about this era of 1968 and this era, and Matthew Weiner actually said that this um, series more than anything he feels parallels what we're going through now like he, I know we've always had parallels and obviously that's one of the reasons Matthew sure. wrote Mad Men but he has said that this particular he felt this particular season will be sort of stuff that parallels what society and what we're all going through now so I I, I mean we saw black people in this black folks <laughs> yeah. was in this episode yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Don, black <laughs> folks yeah. in their own scene talking to each other yeah. Don had her own storyline yeah. what ha I, yeah. like yeah. it was all yeah all black girls talking mm. it was like whoa yeah. Here we are. That's one of the big yeah. complaints Mad Men has gotten, and here we were starting to see. I know, and there were there were complaints last season that it, everyone thought that Dawn was going to have this big storyline, you know, coming in at the beginning of right. last season, and then she really only got that one uh, that one arc with with uh, Peggy when she was staying at her place. Well, you know, it, I think it's interesting to me. It seems to me he creates uh, with the world that Matthew Weiner creates is it, it is designed to actually show what the world was, and it would be, mm -hmm. I think, disingenuous if Dawn had had a full storyline. Yeah, uh, because it, 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 the reality is she was a tiny cog in that company wheel, and had barely gotten in right. there. And I mean, that, remember that episode where there were there were protests, and they they, they mm -hmm. fine hire. You know what I mean? It wasn't. So I, I think when he sets it up that way, it. Uh, uh, it, it's kind of brilliant in a way. Like, yes, this is this is where this person was. This person was by by fiat because of who she was marginalized. Right. And it ought to feel that way. Well, yeah. I mean, and also like it, it, it's the story's not it's not Don's story. I mean, it is as much as I, as an African American, would love to see you know, a, a story about Don and, and, and the gang and everyone else. But really, it's just the story about these put people and and through their world. And so Don was inserted into their inserted into their world. Now we get to see. Don in the office and sort of everything happened from that perspective right. in 1968, which is frankly very interesting, you know, to me. I mean, we'll, we'll we'll see how this goes, but I think the time is right to introduce it in 1968 as opposed to in the past. So yeah, we'll see where it goes. Well, I want to um, thank you all first of all for tuning to, tuning into us on iTunes and and listening to us via iTunes and downloading us via iTunes. We've made us uh, in the top, you know, we're we're always in the top two or three shows Ooh. on After Buzz, and we're doing. And we really appreciate that. We're just getting started. So you've already had a, a bunch of wonderful comments for us and have given us a lot of uh, fives and good ratings. And um, there's a friend of mine named Joe Sanfilippo, and he feels a certain way about fives. We we love fives. That's right. That, that's <laughs> what, we, we love fives. So uh, we really appreciate the fives and, uh, and, and everything you're doing. Please continue to download us. And not only us, just all the rest of the shows in After Buzz. We have, you know, 50-plus wonderful shows. And so... There's lots, lots to check out. Fifty plus a week. We're doing a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty Maybe. amazing. Millions when you lay it all out. pretty downloads. remarkable. Millions of downloads a week. So there, yeah. there you have it. We don't know when Phil sleeps. So, I'm not sure that he does. So let's let's get into this. I want to get into sort of the episode. You forgot itself. the big development. Oh my God! Just, yes. Just skipped How can over I that. Get the big <laughs> I don't know. This is why oh. Phil, Phil's here. Braswell. We are now able. Through, through Don, I think maybe that's your cue. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we have Mad Men drops actually. I think that's, that's yeah. awesome. We have so we're now able to big, 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 big news here at After Buzz, and for you guys out there listening, we are now able to stream our, our our shows via your iPhone and your and your iPad and your Androids. What? Um, wow. Yes. What? Yes. Never before. <laughs> Exactly. Never before. I thought, I thought that was going to be an AfterBuzz <laughs> TV exclusive. It was. <laughs> but that was breaking news. Oh, okay. breaking, that was breaking the news breaking news sound. So, so now um, not only can you you know you know check us out on YouTube and check us out you know um, as you've been to, on iTunes and every other place, but now you can actually on your directly on your device watch us, listen to us wherever live? wherever you go. Live. Walking live, down Phil? the street, you can be walking down the street watching it. Would it would it be no. live, Phil? Phil, would it be that live? It, that it would be, of course. Oh, my yeah. God. Ooh. So there's someone right now who's ahead yeah. of the game. So Hopefully not in their car. Yeah. Right, going, would you please get on with it and talk about the damn talk show? Talk about the damn episode? <laughs> <laughs> like, I get it. <laughs> so, yeah. so check that out. So that's a big development. So you can you can folks can do that. There's many ways to find us right after Buzz. Now, let's get into the episode. We only have five minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you all next week. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Uh, no, let's get this. So, 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 Flip, um, why don't you give me your sort of takeaways? What leapt out at you this week? I, I, I want to talk about Don and Megan, and and I, I, I just uh, their relationship to me is so it's so it's so fascinating on so many levels. But Don is a character. Like, I mean, he's just he he does these things. You know, he does the uh, he's constantly cheating. He's constantly doing things that he encourages other men not to do. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. his relationship with Pete is hilarious because you Pete, you have everything, you have it all. 
You know, remember that when he's sitting right. in oh, with yeah, P- yeah, last season. Yeah. Remember that? And he's like, yeah. "You have everything. Pete. Why would you? Why would you blow it?" And the contempt right. that he ex- that he shows Pete, like, "How could you do this? You, you disgust oh, me that no. you would even think about Pete, it." Pete yeah. wants to be Don and Don. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pete, yes. but but from Don's point of view, Pete shouldn't do this stuff because Pete is of value, and Pete should value his wife and his family. Sure. But Don doesn't do that in his own life. He doesn't value himself, and he doesn't value his his own his stuff. Yeah. He's constantly risking all of it. For, uh, from my point of view, nothing. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Are we supposed? I mean, like, this is the thing that comes up over and over again. But is Don likable? Because we, you know, look. Let me, let me, let me I like two questions. <laughs> I know this is a yeah. thing. So let me just let me just ask this question in two parts. Number one is is, is Don likable? Because we all sort of like you know Don. He's drinking. He's 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 ringing the old fashions. He's betting the broads, and he's telling it like it is. But I mean, like today with me, he's I don't know, and, and I really might I think, and I just give my take. He he's he's more of an anti-hero. We have we have a, we have a, a a world full of anti-heroes. Whether it's the Vic Mackey in the Shield or Tony Soprano and all this, he's kind of an anti-hero. Let me so, ask you yeah, a question. That's it. Is not likable. Go. Let, let me ask you a question. If if you were to create a character, a question with a question. Here we go. Doing? If you were to create a character that was good-looking, articulate, always knows what to do, yeah. always knows yeah. what to say, but all the decisions he makes are reprehensible, and he constantly lives in a way that we all accept as um uh, and a- amoral. Completely amoral. Sure. Does, right? Sure. Wouldn't it be interesting to see if you could sell an audience on this guy based on how articulate, how good looking, and, and, and how together he is, despite the fact that all his actions are completely amoral? Thank I don't you, think, thank you, Matthew Weiner. Yeah, I, don't, I think that's an interesting I, I question. Think, and isn't that because of the heart of he advertising? Asked, I don't think that's the question he is. Is he yeah. likable? Yeah. I, I love him. That's the, that's my point. I'm sorry. I love him. I okay. should have prefaced it with go. I love you him. You were afraid Jeez. to say it. You were afraid I to say him. it. I love him. I love him. He's so charming, but he is so reprehensible. But he doesn't follow his own advice. Catherine? But it's always the subtext with John, though. I mean, you can say that what you say all that stuff, but I mean, and this is why women keep falling for him too, sure. because it's like we we know something's going on there. We know why he's behaving like this. There's a reason. Even tonight, you know, the woman Sylvia. I mean, yeah. she's kind of already trying to understand him yeah. and get under like, his skin. You like to watch. No, 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 that no, wasn't. No, that was no, yeah. That was Eileen. Know, Sylvia. Uh, yeah. Sylvia wants him to find peace, right? That's what I'm yeah. saying. But that's they're all struggling to sort of answer his questions. They're all struggling to sort of figure him out which is a classic thing that women but, will do of but, course but i mean that's kind of the the interest about don is that you know okay no matter how reprehensibly do, at what he does it's like oh yeah but i kind of want to understand him i want to know well, why let, he's doing this well, hold on, hold on, but yeah. it, it's, is yeah. he likable yeah um, and that makes him likable okay. i think me. i think that he is and also the way he's portrayed he's char- so john ham he's, he's charming yeah. he's human and uh americans are aspirational People aspire to be him in spite of his behavior. Right. They aspire. So I would say he's very. It, it's easy to get on his side, but then you chide him for the things that you don't like. Right. Uh, I'm being very diplomatic. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think he's a dick. No, but I mean, he also. <laughs> he is a dick, he but also, he's a likable dick. No, you're not going to tell me you wouldn't have drinks with Don, da- Don Draper. No, I love Don Draper. I, I, no I, question. I, but he's a dick. And but I mean, he yeah, does, well, that's my character. point. Can I, but he does stand up when he needs to stand up. Sure. You know, for Joan. Not always. No, for Joan, he was the only one in the office that was totally against Again, the her weird actions. things, right? He's, right? He stood up for Peggy in the beginning. I mean, sure. so he has got a moral compass that he does. But he stood up much. for her. He stood up for, for Joan and then he left the room. Mm-hmm. And then he didn't follow through on it. He says the it right. It was already thing. done, I think, when he said all that done. stuff. It was, it was already late. done. She'd already done it. it and like late. it didn't matter though. She'd have done it anyway. Yeah. I don't think it I think I don't think it mattered. Uh, Continue, Joe. But again, I mean, I, you I know, think like Pete Campbell to me is more. I mean, as much as I still love Pete right. Campbell, he's, 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 far he's more. more. He's far more. But reprehensible. no, he's not. God right. damn it, Whoa. he's not. Hold that on. is my whole Whoa. point about Don Draper. Pete does not do half the stuff Don Draper does, and we hate Pete because he's a weasel. We hate Pete, Pete because he doesn't weasel-y. own up to who he is. Well, okay, yeah. well that's the Don th- owns it. Does he? Yes. Does Don go home to Megan and say, "I just banged the doctor's wife up the st- up upstairs"? Does he sit down across the street from the uh, across the street from the doctor and say, "I'm going to say go words. bang my wife"? Yeah. Of course not. But that's my point. Is he? They, we've cre- he, we've. I didn't have anything to do with it. He, Matthew Weiner and company have created a character yeah. that we should not like, but we do. You're 100 percent right about that. But I think that's because he's a construct. He's not. This is a guy that has been, uh, y- y- it's a wonderful place they put themselves in. He's not Don Draper, he's Dick Whitman. And he's been able to create this guy mm-hmm. from whole cloth. And I think that, that plays into how he values himself and how he values his relationships. Because like with Joan, don't do this, Joan, mm-hmm. don't do this. I'll go do something ridiculous. 
that's no problem because I'm not real. You're yeah. real. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's interesting to me. But well, it, with him get, and Megan is with your takes. Yeah. I'm all sorry. right. So I interrupt your takes. Let me let me get, get into you. Get into Don and Megan. Well, I do wonder with, with Don and Megan. I think it's interesting because the parameters of relationships change when when uh, when something like like the love scene happens. Because if the parameter of your relationship is that she's my young beautiful wife and no one's you know maybe one one guy's been there before me but nobody's been there since and it's mine and right. it's all mine and that when that changes that changes the whole relationship and i don't think megan understands that i think megan thinks that she has this adult relationship with don but it's not she's on a pedestal she's a possession almost and i don't uh, I that's think she's, changed i think she's unraveling though and i think that's kind of sad to see in this season i think last season she was very confident she was very confident about who she was what she wanted to do her relationship and I, I sort of feeling really for Megan now she's really starting to unravel I mean she knows even if it's not said she knows things are not right things yeah. are not going yeah. well this marriage yeah. is taking its toll yeah and, and she's looking even like she's looking yeah, older look she's haggard. looking worn yeah. haggard the zooby zooby zoo girl is gone <laughs> yeah really gone <laughs> remember zooby zooby zoo yeah, yeah. And that, I think her. that's really sad and that this is you know this is this destructive relationship she's in which she doesn't I think quite understand yet how destructive it is R.I.P. zooby zooby zoo yeah. I, I will I will say that to, for me she's actually sort of sticking up for herself it, it feels like that she's at the end of this episode you see her like stand up to Don and finally say all these things she's wanted to say she's not just falling in line I think that, you know, I, I mean, I don't know if it's so much for her falling apart or so much for her sort of sticking up for herself. No, but she, last season when she stood up for herself, it was, she came from a stronger place. She's True. standing up for herself in a much weaker position she's now. She's lost too many battles yeah, to be she's, as She's strong. kind of been knocked down so many times right. now. She, she still has that spirit in her, but you can see it's just not the same strength she had I, as the, the the girl that married I Don wonder Draper. if it's not if it's not viewable from from both ways at least from from her character's point of view I mean you can see it from the the, the career arc like this is a good thing for me I'm getting out mm. there I'm, I'm doing the I'm doing more stuff my character's more important I'm getting more exposure but you can also view it from Don's angle where he knows what all this really is designed to do is sell product and he sees it from a much more powerful position than she has and I think she can kind of see a much it more cynical it. position yes yeah. And they sit there at dinner with the, with the couple that wants to just screw them, and and that's all Ed on the table. Arlene. Ed and Arlene. Ed and Arlene. Ed and Arlene. Just I, mean, I want this. I wanted you to really just dive into that. Like, what specifically in this episode did you see from Don and Megan that really sort of left out you in this episode? Like, I mean, it seems like we're we're talking gen we're in generalities about. The well, like I said, they're they're the parameters of their relationship have changed now. Right. She's she she's taking her career on her own in a way that, that he's not able to kind of control, right? right? He's never showed up on set except he showed up for the first time, right? Yeah. He's never cared before because it's mm -hmm. always been small stuff and he knows that. He knows what the business is. He knows it's 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 up or down. You kind of come and you go and it's quick and it's, you know, either you, you, you pop or you don't. And it's it's a short career one way or the other. He knows all that. Yeah. He's, he's been casting, you know, actresses for years. So, so he, I think he's left her alone to have this cute little career and all of a sudden it's getting bigger and now we've got this this love scene, which changes. It's the affecting parameters. him for the first yes, time. Yes, that's a great way to yeah. put it. But why is this? Why does it? Why is he so affected by this? Because, because it was, changed the, the the parameters of their relationship. But he was in fear when he when he was home and he said, "Look, I I, I can tolerate it. I don't yeah. like it." Right. Which was I'm like, wow, what, what, that's the exact right thing to say. Don always knows what to say. That's some of the exact right thing to say. But he shows up on the set and he's pissed. So of course. What, what changed from that moment to the to the to the? To when oh, he nothing out? changed. He was lying. Yeah, absolutely. He was yeah. lying the first time because he didn't he didn't want to reveal he didn't want to reveal that he wasn't happy with the direction her career was taking. He wasn't happy with her career last season when he walked away in the Phantom well, in the he, season finale. He, He's he, giving it to her because he doesn't have another option. That's it. He never wanted her to be an actress. No. He just kind of allowed her to be, but he's right. never been yeah. in favor of it, never supportive of it, really. Yeah. Yeah. Flip, I want to I yeah. ask you two things. One, um, you were talking about Megan and Don's relationship. That scene where she's trying to put one over on her husband, and you know you have sort of the two strategies and talking about how she's maybe not in as strong of a position this season as last season, would she have even tried to go for the subterfuge and like play this little this little game, or would she have been direct with him last Which season? Which one were you talking about when she was saying it at dinner? Well, we're, 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 we're really- Like, I'm making you Coco Vent. Oh, yeah, 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 the Let's whole thing. Let's sit down, I'll make <laughs> you yeah. a cocktail. Right? And then she's like, I can't even put one over on my own husband. What good if is If only I? someone would make me some Coco goddamn Vent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what it is. That's how, <laughs> it's I'm a culture. beautiful French it's stew. A French stew. Is that what it is? It's got white wine. It's got white, no, got brandy. It's brandy. Cognac. It's cognac. Okay. Sorry, I'm a cook. I like cooking. Yeah. Tell me what's in it. 
tell, well, tell, tell everybody. You, well, it's chicken, and then you, you also have like onions, and you you stew it, but you have like brandy. You put wine in it, and you you cook it for a long time, and the flavors are. It's like a Julia Child dish. Right? Yeah, she wasn't that wasn't bit. this right in that some, period yeah. where she was uh, doing her art of French cooking on TV? It would have been, yeah. This yeah. Is so I must tell you. Yeah, this is probably actually you're right. This is probably the time Americans were discovering yeah. French cooking. Yes. <laughs> Right. I, I, I've been married for ten years. If if I come home and you my wife, you never got a cock on. Oh, are, are you kidding? <laughs> uh, surely you just. My, don't worry, my wife will never see the show, so it doesn't, it doesn't matter. She'll never listen to this. He's lucky <laughs> if he gets a bottle of on. Ser no, seriously, seriously, there's a Cliff Bar in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I'll cook you. I'll cook you guys some cock on and bring it in. Hey! <laughs> really? Yeah. All right. Yes, now I'll wait. Now everybody, you heard that because yeah. that's got to happen make, now. I this make is a good an one. internet promise. I make a good one. All right. One. Now my my other question. So while I'm just saying, if if I come home, if I came home. From my hard day at the office, whatever. But if I came <laughs> home, you'd be suspicious. I, I, if if that was all laid out, if Coco, at first off, I'd probably be poisoned because my wife yeah. would probably kill us both cooking something like that. But, yes. but um, I, I would absolutely. And, yeah. and it would be, I'd be waiting for the shoe to drop. There's no You'd question. Be like, who are you and what happened to my wife? Right? Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Where, where are you going on vacation without me? What's, yeah. what's, what's happening? The other thing is uh, you mentioned your point of, of Don as construct mm -hmm. because he's not Don. You're right. He's not Don Draper. He is Dick Whitman. Do you think the reason why he's so self-destructive with Don Draper's things is because he feels like he doesn't own any of them in the first place? I, yeah, the whole it's a borrowed life. You're 100 percent right. The oh, whole thing is a take. borrowed life, and so he's built this that's thing. That's why he's so angry. I, it, it, I think that's why he doesn't value himself. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, you don't destroy things you value. Right. If you if you value your relationship, you don't destroy it. If you value your 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 car, you don't drive it into a wall. I mean, these are these are ba basic simple things. But Don doesn't value this stuff because you're right; it's not really his. Yeah, right. He's Dick Whitman. Everything is borrowed. Everything could come toppling down tomorrow. Huh. It's interesting. I, you're 100 percent right. I mean, here's a guy; it's a construct of a, of a character. That's, that's that's great. Well, it, but why? Then well, I'm going to get I'm going to get to you in a okay. second, Matt. But I just uh, piggybacking on this, which will transition into you. I want to get like a little bit of this Project K. Then why? What makes him such an effective and wonderful creative? Because he is the quintessential creative director. Like he's, he's still, I mean, although his suits may look a little outdated and he has the shines going, coming off of his uh, seductive ways, he can still freaking, you know, his creative juices are, are still flowing. He's still coming up with great stuff, in my opinion. I, th I thought the, the Heinz ketchup thing was great. Oh, correct. that was a beautiful uh, but, but, but his, uh, his But his, 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 his thing, I too, well, his need to sort of do Project K with Pete and Stan and, you mm -hmm. know, um, why is he still are able you, to? Are you familiar with M. Butterfly? Have you ever? M. Butterfly is a play, right? And it's mm -hmm. about you, you know. Madam Butterfly. Yeah, yeah. 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 and it's about uh, uh, it's about a is, is it Vietnam? Is is it yeah. Vietnamese? Yes. A Vietnamese Katoy, essentially that gets with a French diplomat, and he, they're together for twenty years. Is it 15, 20 years? Something inordinately yeah. long, where the, the the French diplomat should have been able to figure out um, this girl's a boy, and never did. <laughs> and the reason is because the the idea is, is is that that no one can play a girl a, a girl like a boy. No one can play this part better than a man trying to be a woman. Right. So no one can play an ad man better than someone playing a role in the first place. He's pretending to be Don Draper mm -hmm. all the time. So he's always it's always an act. Yeah, but but that has doesn't explain how he's so great at it. Well, no, I, I think that I think that you're onto something just because He's he's worried about people seeing through his facade all the time. So he's a, he's a reader of people. He's all constantly in survival mode, and because of that, he's become a, a very effective reader of people and their motivations. He's trying to understand, you know, what would what would Don Draper do in this situation? How do I feel? What's the disconnect between the two? I think that there's there's something very vital to his existence that's helping him out. It's it's the survival instinct. That's that's providing him with this kind of juice. If he doesn't continue to provide, you know, if he isn't able to continue to to work at this level, there's a there's a chance that his life will unravel. Huh. So the so he, the, he's so under the gun, trying to stay on top of being yeah. Don Draper that he's forced to sort of operate at a creative. Well, at a, when a, when a you creative, this creative scene, if he's able to like really stay up up there, because if he doesn't, right, it all comes tumbling down. To and the, and the f folks. he doesn't even have his own name to fall back on. Right. That's interesting. I love, I love, well, I love all these takes. Yeah. yeah. Good, good hot Don Draper takes. So, well, now we're here, Matt, what, what, what left out at you this episode? I mean, what, what, what did you, I know you, you mentioned uh, our boys, uh, yeah. Harry and Cosmo. Yes. So. Uh, Wait, we're not going to talk about the biggest scene? Which one? With Don? 
Well, we're gonna get which which one is this? We're talking. He's At talking about end. Sylvia and the penny. Oh, we're gonna and the yeah. cross. No, well, what, we're, is, no, we're not gonna talk about we it. We are gonna talk about that. But oh, I, I was I was hoping we could talk about that with Catherine because she wouldn't talk about the women. And but we can talk about that right now. That's actually all right. Yeah, so then, why does Don time. go? So why is Don having this affair? Right? Is, is that the question? Well, the that's question that's is, a deep question. Well, because Don. Well, this kind of well, no, no, this is kind of speaks to my thing. Like Don, like he does. He he's a, sort of this wonderful woman. He shows up on set. He gets pissed and he sh- and he goes back to be with uh, his, his Sylvia. Sylvia. He's Sylvia. Sylvia Rosen. He's got to even the playing field again. Now the playing field's tilted back down. He's he's always up here. He's always got one more thing going that Megan doesn't have. He's always got a secret. Right. He's always got a girlfriend. He's always got something happening. Now she's up here. She's as far as he's concerned, that makeout scene levels the field. Okay. Yeah. She what's, what's all the, the times he's banging the upstairs neighbor, she kissed that one dude for thirty seconds, even. Even Stephen, he's got to get back up. Well, no, he didn't see it as even. That's the sad thing. He was like so annoyed at it. Yeah. And I'm like going, what are you doing? She's just fake acting and you're doing the real thing, but that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. He's upstairs doing Daphne. I mean, that's deep water. He's he's, he's always the double standard guy, obviously. Like, uh, he's been that way since back in the Betty Draper days. But what's with the cross? What's with the, like, you know, I mean, it seems pretty literal again, you know. But pretty obvious. But what, what Joe? What do you, what do you, what's with the cross? Well, I'm not sure if he didn't want to see it or he didn't want uh, he didn't want it on her. Again, I'm, I'm always torn with Don because I think there's so many times when he values other people as real and himself as not. And I don't know if the cross bothered him or if he thought the cross was going right. to bother her. Or is it like I can't I can't you know bang you with this cross on because that makes you something else? Or I can't do this act looking at a cross? Well, right. I, I don't know. I think it's it has a lot to do with what she said. She said you know. Uh, he asked her what she prays for, and she said that she prays for him, you know, to to curb his demons and and to find he, peace, right? To find peace, and he doesn't even want to think. He doesn't want this woman to even be thinking about that, you know. So, you, I'm sorry. No. Can, can I ask you something? With yeah. You all being men, um, what do you think she, he's getting out of sleeping with all these other women? I mean, I'm kind of fascinated I what it is. I mean, he's not like yeah. what I mean. It's is it an is it a power thing? Is it an escape? Or well, here's mich- my mich- take. I'll yeah. give you my yeah. take. Ready? Please, please. Phil's Ladies and Phil's gentlemen, take. Phil's take. Phil. Yeah. Again, prefacing, I have not seen the tonight's episode, yeah. but um, no, it's it. For me, it stems from it's as you guys are talking about. It's revenge, yeah. right? Yeah. So going back to last season, him, him and his wife Megan, they were a great duo, mm. right? But now he's lost Peggy and he's lost her, and so he's he's doing this out of revenge for her. I I think ultimately, really? I mean. It, the, the scenes of last season, they were such a great duo. They were hitting in full strides, and he wanted basically her to be side by side with him at the agency. Mm. Now she's not. She wants. She wanted to do her own thing. Yeah. yeah and right. that that is upsetting. I think uh. it's I think it's twofold. I mean, M- Michel Foucault in a History of Sexuality, he says, um, you know, all everything is about sex, but sex is about power. So like, I do agree. It's it's it. You know, as somebody who's been effectively he effectively has neutered himself by taking on this other this other life Mm. he will never get to fully be himself and i think he is more dick whitman with these women sure than he ever will be with his wife. Wives, right. right. So he's Don Draper with his wives. He gets to be just a. The, he, he gets, gets to, be, to be Dick Whitman with these sure. other women. He gets to have both. He gets to be, you know, raw sexuality and be vulnerable at the same time. And it's it's a standard cliche thing of you know I mean look he's, I mean he's empty. He's got an empty place and he's looking for a hole. It's a horrible choice of words. He's looking for a hole to fill. <laughs> oh. He's filling. Well, no, filling he's a, filling no, his own no, hole. Horrible, no, no. But, but like no, but in his within, within, his, within himself. Metaphor Speaking, yeah. of course, but it's interesting we never really saw the start of this relationship, is it? We, it just kind of, just when kind the of season, appeared. This yeah. season, because, I mean, the last season ended with, you know, obviously that scene in the bar. And then we just kind of walked into this season of, like, we don't know the history of it, he and Sylvia, but right. they, they, it was just happening. Was kind of, it was, was already in process. Yeah, yeah, it was already in process. I, yeah. I think you're right about taking back the power. But it, uh, there's something to a premeditated love scene that can mess with you. I mean, I, I my, my wife used to be an actress. I, I dated actresses for a long time. When you know it's coming, it just sits there. It just sits there in the back of your head, and it yeah. makes you all. It, it just ruins you. And it and it and there's a there's a and, and when you're doing the love scene, you know it's nothing. You recognize that intellectually, yeah. but when it's your it's your wife, your girlfriend. So you're saying you don't like looking. You don't, oh, it's, it's awful. terrible. It's, is it? it's awful. It's horrifying. And and how it do is. Angelina and Brad and all these I other people I cope? <laughs> honest to God, I don't know how they Many do. Of it. The, I really they don't. just don't watch the movies they're in. Yeah, period. obviously. Yeah, yeah, but well, but even John Hamm and Jessica, you know, he's, he's married to. I do not too, understand yeah. how people do it. I've never been able to do it. Well, but go ahead. I want you to get to you. You can, but this is your floor. But I want you to say your say your take. And get into your no, that, that's what I wanted to say. What I liked about this episode was after uh, a lot of 
you know, exploration of Don and relationship material. We got to see more of the cast this week yep. and more of uh, SCDP. Yeah. Yes. And uh, we have uh, Harry Crane making big, a move. Big baller Whoa. Harry Crane. Yeah. yeah. Coming out of nowhere. You know, this Pursuit guy. suit Harry with all these. Exactly. <laughs> with his with his sideburns. Yeah. He's so into the culture. He has to be hip because yeah. he's on the forefront of television advertising. You know. He's you drinking the ABC cup. Yeah, yes. Exactly. Yeah. Like he's, he's, you know, he's, he's looking hip. like. Yeah. But like it. He did he did some reprehensible things, but he also stood up for himself this week, something that uh, Sterling and Cooper recognized in a big way. Sure. Um, I do, you know, like, <laughs> the guy's responsible <laughs> for so much of their business. Sure. He, he saw that television was coming. He made a play back in season two, mm -hmm. and then he's just been sitting pretty right. ever since. I mean, not happy with it, mm -hmm. but... He wants to be a partner. Well, this is this is another case of the world changing around Sterling Cooper, Draper Price, the world changing around these guys. Yeah. And there's a handful of people, you know, like 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 uh, like like Harry, who's like, well, actually, I've been here. I'm changing too. Yeah. I've got sideburns. I've got a sports coat. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm the evolving. only one who sees what's coming. And, and I'm and the I'll, only one who's evolving in a big way. And while you guys are fighting over freaking ketchup and Lucky Strike, I'm over here making moves and deals. And right. Yeah. And, th and things that in my in my in my spare time, I've just did a move to solve a problem, and it's actually brought in you know one hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of business. Yeah. And, and yeah. what does that translate into today's money? In, in my, you know, was wow. that a million five oh, today? Million. I don't have my slides. I don't have my calculator yeah. in front of me. That'd be a lot. But <laughs> and, uh, it is you know, and and with that whole thing with Scarlett, he didn't have a choice. I mean, Joan. Joan essentially took his power. Yeah. Joan said, "I'm firing your secretary today." Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. No, she she cut off his balls, and and, he, and that's him coming back from this big big win. That's to right. To discover his secretary walking out the door, the right. secretary who brings him the last Danish before uh, of the day on morning. Sure. Monday Damn morning. right. Yeah. Damn right. Who who is his rock, and he needs her. So yeah, he's not gonna begrudge her the the extra hours, and he's not gonna let anyone take her from him, even if she says she is a partner. Because as he put it, you know, I make what I do for this business. I do during the day. I do in the light of day. I right. do in the light of day. Yeah, that Cold was a lot of love. Like like just like an awful thing to say. Yeah, no. an awful thing to That's say. I think four people watching went. Oh! Oh, we all, we awesome. all, there was a lot of audible like screaming yeah. and, 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 and howling in our, in our screening room. There, we had a lot yeah. of talking to the screen in this, this episode. But I think this also represents the the, the shift we're seeing in in, in Stone and Cooper Draper Price. We're seeing this shift where Joan was you know, Jones was a den mother before she was a partner. She sort of ran the office. She made those decisions. No one questioned them. Certainly not freaking you know Harry Crane like yeah. of all people. But right. no one questioned Joan. And then. So Joan now as a partner now really sort of feeling her oats is doing what she always does, which is basically run the office and mm -hmm. and, and handle office politics. But like, because she has the title now, right. it's an affront to the men who don't have the title. Right. Well, so so now Harry's like, wait a minute, it's a, either you're it's already you're already a partner, but you can't take my. This isn't the way it used to be. I'm like this. That doesn't cause him to sort of make his play. And he, I think he has a point. Right. Yeah, he's right. Yeah, but she was right in what I mean. If she was running the office, as she, I mean. She, she just saw it as something that was a fireable, you know, a sure. fireable yeah, offense. A fireable damn offense. right. Well, I don't yeah. think that Joan, I don't think what Joan did was wrong. No. And, and I certainly don't think the way he addressed it was right, especially with a line of day comment. But I do think, you know, in, a, in, a, in an office politic way, he needed to stand up for himself. Like, I'm bringing in business, I'm TV. Well, yeah. like you said, times are changing, and and you know that would have absolutely been the right move at the old office. That yeah. would have been, sure. and it wouldn't have been questioned. And but at this office, the way this is shaken out, a whole brave new world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You he can't. You fired my damn secretary. Who the hell do you think you are? And frankly, this is the part like like we talk about the the office part of the the office politic part of this show that I love. I love seeing that that pitch. I love seeing that. I love seeing Broadway uh, Joe on Broadway. I mean, to see Harry. Uh, I, we, we we see so much of Don and Peggy doing their thing, but to see Harry and Cosgrove, yeah, you know, close that deal. That was kind of cool. I love and it was smooth that. too. It was slow. Uh, was they didn't rush anybody. They're like, hey, like doing the Notre Dame thing. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, uh, that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Kenny, did you tell him I went to Notre Dame? Hey, no, nah, no. I I told it. him about the actor. I told him about Joey Henderson. Yeah. 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 It's Joey Heatherton. Joey Heatherton. You, I guess you don't even know who Joey Heatherton is. No. Oh, she was kind of a, a she had this 
a, she was like a star back then. Like she was a singer. I'm so glad actress. she's a woman. I didn't understand. I didn't even know she was a girl. I had no clue. No, she was. What? She was you a couldn't fairly. Name fur? Joey Heatherton. I Heberton just. Hey, was, I don't judge. No, she was yeah. a very famous uh, star back then. She was one of these people that went back, went on all those shows, and she. I don't know if she had any movie roles. I don't know if she did an Elvis film once, but I don't think. I don't think so. But she sort of was quite known as. You know, she's very. Singer, dancer, kind of star. And she right. was one of those people that would be always on these variety shows. Well, in that moment, mm. I just felt like, again, this is, I keep banging this home and I'm beating this to death, mm. but I just felt like in that moment watching Cosgrove and Harry do their thing, I felt like they were very much as effective and as cool as Draper doing his uh, as doing his thing with the carousel in season one. It was like, oh, these guys. Mm. I mean, he looked at home with, with, the, with the sports coat and the sideburns and the, and the glasses, sort of like, Talking about TV, I was like, "Yeah, this is the future, man." Absolutely, yeah, this is right? where it's at. And then you have you, you, you know you can you can ju juxtapose it with the meeting in the uh, in in the hotel room, right? With the slides and and the uh, and with your with your with your two uh, what you call them um, poster boards. Thank you very and much. As cool as Don is, he's looking a bit stuffy. In yeah, the looking yeah. a little bit it's different. Cool. So I don't know. Do you, any, you have anything else on, on those guys before we before we move on to? Well, just that uh, Ken Ken's feeling squeezed, but he still he still doesn't have the balls to make a play for partner. Mm -hmm. um, you know his relationship with Dow Chemical and his father-in-law getting increasingly strained right. uh, during Vietnam, and uh, you know I think that we're going to see some tension between uh, between Ken and Harry if Harry does indeed get the top spot. Which he's not done ca campaigning for, even with that twenty three thousand five hundred dollar check. I love, I love the that way he played a, that. That was a lot of he's money like, too. He's like, he's like, here's a check for twenty three thousand, blah blah blah. And he's like, okay. He's like, I so, deserve this, yeah. Right. So now what? I always thought they were gonna sack him. Then I oh, thought yeah. that I thought they were gonna. I thought it was severance. Yeah, I thought it was, the yeah. I thought yeah. It was cool. like see you but later. But they can't. You're hundred percent right. Though. They can't. Yeah. But that's also the old school versus the new school. Yep. It's uh, Roger and Cooper like. You know, you handle yourself well, boy. Here's Here, your here's check. Your check. Uh. He's like, yeah, I earned it. What else? What yeah. is twenty three thousand dollars worth in 1968 oh, money? I mean, you could buy a house in the valley. Three hundred grand, maybe. He probably like, got two houses back houses then. Yeah, three, you yeah. could yeah. buy a house in the valley for sixteen k. So, I mean, you got to figure. What is that? That's that's one right. point. That's one a point lot eight. of money. Yeah, it's pretty know. impressive. <laughs> it's a lot of money. Catherine, we'd love to you this episode. Well, I loved all the, the female storylines in this episode. I felt yes. it was very sort of female skewed. Um, and in, in many ways, I think even the men were sort of on the sideline tonight because I thought there was so much happening with all the women sure. in, in this show. And uh, even Peggy, who she wasn't in it a lot, and but I thought that it was still quite powerful, her scenes, because, I mean, she seems to have gone on to this new level of... She had guilt last week about the fact that she was kind of... In some ways, I think I felt like she still had some loyalty to Stolen right. Cooper, but now I think it's gone. She right? was smiling this week. She was smiling. She sort of smelt blood. She had victory. I think. I think what's what ketchup what Trump's, actually it was red. <laughs> it was, she smelled ketchup. <laughs> I think. I think what, yeah. what, what what Trump's. I mean, I think yeah. she still loves Don and respects Don yeah. and respects the friendship. But I think what Trump's all of that is a victory. Like I said, yes. that she actually. She when, you know, beat Don. I mean, yeah. we, we talked about last week that yeah. the, the pupil has become the master and all that mm. stuff. The, the, the notion that she beat Don, because he, you know, he said in the room he wanted to see the ketchup bottle. And what a scene, Don listening. I know. I mean, that I thought that was incredible that he, you know, this right. powerful Don that was such a leader he knows and Peggy's was, good, Peggy though. was his secretary. He's listening at the door, like trying yeah. to kind of sneak to hear what I found that. Well, what I found even more fascinating yeah. is that th those pitches weren't too far off. They were yeah. like pretty darn close. The yeah. only difference was like we're putting ketchup, making ketchup the only thing you think about. Only thing Peggy did was she had the bottle. Yes. She had the a billboard. 40 foot tall mm. ketchup. And I was like, that's all I need to hear. I got to yeah. say, if, if she'd still been working for him, I bet that would have been the backup idea. That would have been the, the idea in their back pocket. Sure. Well, 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 just we want to see the ketchup bottle. Yeah. Well, bring out the other one. You yeah. know that had been right there. And it's just the, the irony. Don would have shot that down because, because in defense of his own idea. Well, it's all, but it's also... Uh, you little, know what? You're not wrong. Yeah. But it's also very little. It's also a le lesson of, you know, I think Don's idea was great and it was abstract and it was also conceived in a, in a broom closet while they're smoking pot. Listening smoking to weed. Blue Sandalwood <laughs> Soaps. Uh, what was the name of the song? Hold on. I had it. I'm so <laughs> proud that I had it. Friends I Haven't Met Yet by Blue Sandalwood Soap. I mean, their, their minds were I've open. had some very good ideas in, in the broom closet Listen, listening to uh, in, in Friends the, I Haven't Met Yet. In the proverbial and that's the, o the proverbial big, broom big old pot, Big old pot leaf on but the listen, album so cover. They, they, so I think they, they came out with this sort of abstract idea of like, bottle. It's not the, we don't see the bottle, man. There's no bottle. 
You are the bottle. The bottle <laughs> is in your mind, man. You're the bottle, well, I man. Thought, I thought their, uh, I actually thought their uh, pitch was much more, uh, oh, yeah. uh, more contemporary and more I like, did. you I know, like Heinz is Heinz. Well, that's, but uh, they yeah. were actually, I think it was a better pitch. It was a way better well, this pitch. Is way a, better pitch. It was again, a way better pitch, but then this is this is the lesson. So yeah. it's a way better pitch. I think it was a way better idea and a way better sort of abstract way of looking at things. But what Peggy understood with her idea is that it's really about the client. Like the client, That's maybe it. she read mm. a situation. He really wanted to see his freaking ketchup bottle. bottle. Yeah. Like, and she kind of knew that. And sometimes it's about doing what this is what Pete knows. It's about yeah. doing what the client wants and not shoving your ideas. And Peggy seems to have yeah. that balance, in which is so Don can sort of win the idea war, but Peggy. Peggy won appeals the to people. She told him, "What's the difference between ketchup and catsup? That right. other stuff is crap, watered down crap, and you yeah. make the real thing." Yeah. How angry does that make you feel? How angry does it. that make you feel? Yeah. Angry? Good. Good. Here's the solution: a big bottle, forty foot tall bottle. It's very Boom. simple, right? Yeah. Spike the football. <laughs> <laughs> done and done. Yeah, she wanted, to and then so and what about? But do, you, but do you think Peggy lost a little bit of her soul to, to tonight? I mean, nope. what about the friendship that? she had i mean she used her you Stand know it friend, like it. yeah that's what i'm saying i mean i, I found I that really I see a friend over there yeah, yeah but I, I thought that was kind of like you just you know, kind of trample on people now well I, I wonder her boss her what's the new boss's I mean, name sure i can't think of ted, ted chaw yeah. ted, ted said it last week he said uh, you, no your friend your friend underestimated you and but right well. but that's true though that's true i mean how do you grow I mean, eventually. Yeah, but you don't. You don't. Uh, you stay loyal to your friends. I well, mean, that, I wouldn't. Then, I wouldn't sort of use it for a work. Well, thing, the question I think becomes at some point, like, what is the point of your friendship with this person? Are you guys just on the phone every couple of nights to bitch about work? I think they were. That's I what I'm that's saying. What, so I then, at, at and what they point, have more chemistry together than she does with her boyfriend. Yeah, no, because I, she's talking to him, not the boyfriend. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but I mean, at what point does that stop being worth it? And hey, there's a lot of business to be had here. But That's kind of the bitch of it all. It, it's not about. I, I don't yeah. think it's about the overall business to be had. I think it's about Peggy wanting that win. This was her shot yeah. to have that but one. At what cost? I still keep saying. Yeah, and you're of what right cost. about that. But I just, just to your point, I don't, you know, I don't know that this is to both to both of you. I don't know that this is the status quo for Peggy. Like this is how she's going to roll now. I think it was like, I, I needed this win. Like I, mm. I got this win. Now I can sort of. You know, maybe she settles down. But if you do that once, mm. you'll do it again. Maybe she'll yeah. smack around those three yeah. stooges that work for her. There's no I, settling down. There's no. no I just think you know right. that. You, I think you've crossed a line there where you do that to a friend. Boy, I really do. I mean, I think so. Ted Shaw was. I really, agree. Yeah. yeah. Ted Shaw was really. He he looked like the cat that ate mm. the canary. Oh He was yeah. so proud of himself, mm -hmm. ordering his uh, his uh, old Spanish and his whatever else he ordered. Uh, you know, there, there's he, no the grin there's like, no way in my opinion that that that, that this will be the end of uh, that Peggy will be satisfied. That oh, no. she'll be like, no. You, you okay. what was that line from the Scottish play? My more having would be as a sauce to make my hunger more. I mean, sure. yes, you're just you want more. You get okay. some and you want more. I think she's gonna, well, she's gonna be become a stone cold killer. Out. Uh, I just well, the only thing that really left out of me. Oh, uh, we got to talk about Dawn too. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes, yes. Got, yes. Yeah, just to continue the the female story. I mean, we have to talk and about the Joan. fact that Joan. Yeah, well, yeah I'm oh, well, get to he, Joan. You're, you're, briefly, you're doing but, Joan, you but um, do, I think it's so interesting that we're starting to get a more of a story with Dawn now. And I mean, she, we presume that I mean, she was talking about the train line going up to she's going into Harlem, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there's she's or working this. Harlem. Yeah, she's working in the successful office and then she's what she was talking about the train getting emptier and emptier sure. so she gets like, to 72nd street she, and it's just yeah. her in the the boot black right it was yeah. her in the end. right yeah and then, and then again sort of the, the her friend is getting married and there's that whole interesting thing again of like the career versus marriage and you know like you don't have my problems because i you're getting married right. you don't yeah. have to worry yeah so what, what i find interesting about this is if yeah. you want to take take the race out of it which i'm sure will not be taken out of it yeah. is you know don is peggy yeah. You know, Don is Peggy from mm. season one. Yeah, yeah that's just, what I, just yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, this the, whole thing of, you yeah. know, Peggy was coming on the train. She was coming from yeah. the Bronx or wherever mm. she was coming from. And now, I mean, you know, uh, Don's coming from uptown and she's going up to 120 something, mm. you know, on her, on her way back. But yeah, it, 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 they're doing this really cool thing where they're talking about it in terms of sort of showing this, this, this young woman in terms of race. But it's also a story of I'm starting here, too. Yeah. Here's my career. Mm. I'm doing the same things Peggy did. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out and that, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I And what it. do you think of the Joan sort of telling her, you know, giving her the, you know, the keys to the, what was the, it, the keys? The supply to closet and the right. time cards, giving but her a new that, responsibility. Was that, yeah, was that actually like a, but she said this is punishment, but it was a new responsibility, right? No, it was right? a new responsibility. And I, I can't really tell, and I'll just, just yeah. segue, because I mean, we're, we're crunched on time. Right, here. Okay. I, wanna, I just want to give my, my, in this, I can get mm. in my little small Joan take, is I'm not so sure on that if Joan really is, um, 
I, I think that there, there's an affinity there. There's people rooting for Dom, but I, I can't tell if she's it's just because she's an African American or a Negro, as they call her back then, mm-hmm. or if it's because back to the woman thing. Like there's something to be said about, you know, they understand Joan, uh, Peggy with her with her own secretary. A lot of them understand where these women are. Like we like you know Joan is here, and there's something about um, you know Dawn that that Peggy like, that, that, I'm sorry that Joan likes. I think yeah. that there's. You know, I know they made the comment in the boardroom that, well, you know, the Negro problem, they are, mm. we're getting under a lot of pressure, we can't let her go. But I think that Joan is sort of like, Joan was never going to let her go. I don't, no. I, I've ever, I, no. Joan was never going to fire her. And, and that was, and that was backed up by the fact that Dawn was like, I feel so bad about it, take my pay. Yeah. She's like, yeah. all right, you're decent. I like you. Yeah. And, 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 just, and just, just with Joan, I just think that, like, you know, she's such a, I mean, really. Joan, Joan hasn't been really a one-dimensional character. She's been a guarded character these last sort of five seasons. You've, you've seen these peaks into Joan, and you, you there's a facade there that we know there's a little more back to, like in seasons one through three, maybe. And then we saw a little deeper in in seasons, you know, uh, four and five with the, the marriage and sort of the, the you know, all that stuff. But now we're really getting to see like what Joan, you know, Joan is a bit of a enigma and in, in, in a ways because. She's also like Don, a bit of a relic in, in 1968. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, she her really clothes is. are looking a little frumpy. Yeah, she's and then they really played that up with her going out with her younger, hipper friend. Yeah, and it's the swinging 60s, and everyone's doing their thing, and and Jones is kind of like, you know, uncomfortable, but. She does know what to do. She's very experienced. She's still a woman. She's yes. still Joan for she crying out loud. She still knows how to get a guy. She can drop a guy around her finger <laughs> in one it. second. But <laughs> that being said, she was still out of place. But I, there was a, there was certain there's a certain self awareness about Joan though that I love that she sort yeah. of feels like I am a partner. And she no think she didn't hear what what Harry said. I mean she yeah. she heard that it hurt. Um, and also so did everybody else in the office. Yes, by the way, they did. Uh, including the old blondie secretary. Yeah. That old you name. better believe it. <laughs> Meredith. Meredith. <laughs> the dits. <laughs> Read it back. Uh, Meredith, please leave the room. But you, um. have, uh, <laughs> but you, have, you have her friend who sort of looks up to Joan as everyone, all these women do, and Joan's sort of saying, well, you know, I'm, in, I'm still in a man's world, and this is still this, and this isn't really that. And, you know, I mean, she, Joan is sort of self-aware, like, okay, I, I'm here, I've arrived, but what more is there? Like, yeah. So it'll be really interesting to see how Joan sort of unpacks that. I'd like to see how Joan comes out in 1968. It, it was also nice for her to hear from Kate that, you know, like, hey, you, you're you everything that I want. You're everything that I want to be. You should be proud of yourself. It, own this for a right. second. Because I know you don't let yourself. Right. And then Joan was like, yeah, but. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, because she knows that, you know, she's here, but she's not, you know. So I, I'm, I'm really fascinated to see. I think we're going to see a lot of this character, like, yeah. sort of really... Un- she's un- got a seat at the table, but she's still the one serving everybody their food. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll keep the that. drunks away. <laughs> like a Joan drop. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, uh, and then I want to, um, you know, not much, I, I, I got to give you your due. Okay. I mean, your, your boy, Benson. Benson Watch. Benson Watch. <laughs> Benson All right. Watch. Six, we, need, we, need a theme, we need a theme for we, that. We, we, do, we need a drop in for Benson bum, Watch, bum, 68. Bum, 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 what do you got on Benson? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We did have a confirmed Benson sighting this week. It was yes. brief. Right. He was hanging with Gin- he was hanging mm. with Ginsburg, um, and uh, I just, I don't know the name of the uh, the, the, uh, the new older copywriter, woman, yeah. yeah, who's working with them. Um, but Ginsburg's paranoid about Stan going in the supply closet work on Project K, right. mm. and uh, he asked uh, Bob Benson, "Do you know Do you know what it is?" And he's like, "No, I don't." And uh, Ginsburg says, uh, "says Is that because you know what it is?" And I bet. Benson knows what it is because he's a snake. Right. We can't <laughs> trust him. <laughs> End of Benson watch. End of Benson okay. watch. Well, before we jump into um, Mike August, our guy, our, our guy Mike August, catching yes. the weeks from last week. I do. I just. I'd be remiss if we didn't mention the uh, the. the well, I don't want you to be remiss. Well, mm. the swinging '60s scene with the, with the two couples and her boy Ted McGinley. Who, who's, who's, who's put on a couple of LBs that take What? That, I was wondering, did they put him in a fat suit or oh, is that kind of his deal? What was he? Married with children, remember? Oh, yeah, super children. good looking guy next door. To, remember the uh, one that she, she kept yeah. in the basement? I mean, and then oh, if, yeah. you're, if you're a little older like me, you remember from Happy Days. Happy Days, yeah. yeah. Happy Days? Sure. He, was, he took over for Richie. When when, when, when Ron Howard oh, left, he, okay. he he came in. Wow. And, uh, and then he's also um, Revenge, Revenge of the Nerds. Yeah, he was the, the super good looking guy. He's always a super good looking guy. Nerds! But yeah. now he's kind of the. You know, he's Ted. I don't know. That was, but it's good to see him. That was crazy. Ted McGinley. Yeah. It's good to see him do some character roles. Yeah, too. absolutely. Not playing the sort of the, the chin and the you know the hair. But anyway, 
So that little uh, swing, swinging si- uh, 60s sequence yeah. there. Which I thought before. Swingers was more, oh, no, I guess it started late 60s. Oh, Bob yeah. and Carol and Ted and Alice, that was yeah. over, wasn't mm-hmm. it? Was I was thinking more 70s. But, yeah. I guess that was, but that was 60s. like 71, 72 oh. that that but, uh, movie came out. It was that's what I thought, early 70s was more the Swingers, well, but I guess they're getting a no. jump on it, right? Yeah, because you're <laughs> talking about this. We're in the free love time. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. And they work, in, free love. they work in the television industry. They're a little the curve. Cutting edge. Sitting in the car with Joan and her buddy, who's the better kisser? I'm like, does that? work like is that <laughs> I, I i would never even try that it's a new one that's a new line but it, it, as try it, guys aside from the, aside from the women you know and the, the women in the workplace thing the, yeah. the subtext here was also sort of the whole sort of you know sexy 60s sort of vibe there because you had you know with joan and the girl and yeah don yeah. into this and then at every turn everyone's trying to do a little uh hookup of some sort yeah but anyway ted mcginley's fat <laughs> I'm sorry. Catches of the week, Mike August. <laughs> Mike August, that's horrible. I, I take that back. Uh-huh. Anyway, you're wonderful. Uh-huh. Mike August is, is is our guy and our friend and a wonderful, wonderful friend of the show. Super fan. And uh, our super fan. And he, you know, we, we watch the show. We, we, we watch the show. We run straight in here and we do the thing. So we don't catch everything. In fact, there's a 100% chance we're not going to catch a lot of things. So our good friend Mike August sort of points out some things for, for us. And... Um, you know, one of the things that he one of, he has a few things he talked to, talked about from last week's episode. From, I'm sorry, from last week's episode. So yeah. not so he actually goes back. So next week he'll have catches from this, this week's week. Episode. So basically, he cleans up our mess. So if we <laughs> screw up and we we don't he clean up, it, he, okay. he cleans up after us. Good, good to know. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's all, but it's all sort of on a subtextual level as well. Where he's going so these are the things we missed because we're not as smart as he is. Well, I mean, yes. it's, it's, these are all takes. <laughs> all right, I get it. Well, no, they're <laughs> takes. They're <laughs> I, I follow. Let the man speak. Let the man <laughs> speak. Would you please tell me what he had to say? I'm trying. All right. <laughs> think you should do it now. Here I am. Phil looks uncomfortable. It's coming out right now. All right. <laughs> One of the things that he had to say. <laughs> I <laughs> wish you'd just read it. Okay, no. The After Buzz <laughs> TV Catch of the Week. <laughs> there it is. Oh, there's a drop. There's a drop. <laughs> okay. Thanks. I'm waiting for the drop. So no, so he talked about Peggy's boss. So when he talked about Peggy's boss, when uh, when he said that you know one of the mistakes that he, that, you, that your friends made was underestimating you, and he said he feels the subtext is Don having an affair with his friend's wife, Don under- underestimating Rosen. So it's kind of these are the type of things that he sort of like is into. It's all subtextual. He also says when Don gives the money to Rosen's wife after sex, he says tell your husband I found this in a cookie jar. He, he thought of the expression with your hand caught in the cookie jar. Then in other words, like you know, uh, meant to him that Don is going to get caught. So these are so in other Ooh. words. Uh-huh. These the, the 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 Mike August things are sort of like he he believes that there's there's things uh, another layer here we're not looking into sub sub these are all sub subtext thing. Well, also, uh, it also got referenced today in, in many regards of um, you know he said basically Megan's saying hey you know what uh, you know I get paid to do this mm-hmm. and he says there's another profession that gets paid to kiss yeah right, right. Mm-hmm. yeah and here's one you're gonna like man prostitutes yep here's mm-hmm. what he said you know in the scene where Benson tries to befriend Pete. And you know, you know, he was thinking, you know, weasels stick together, and he agrees with Matt Lieberman. Yeah, <laughs> he agrees with Matt Lieberman that who, Vincent's who's Matt trouble. Lieberman? Which one yeah, is Matt so Lieberman? I don't know. Who has two thumbs and just got name checked by Mike August? This Ooh. guy. <laughs> um, and he also says, you know, uh, Pete getting caught for one of his affairs is a warning shine showing to us that that, that this is going to happen to Don. Um, and so when Don does get caught, um, that's when he feels to be forced to truly confront his issues. To cure his affliction, so I guess he's starting sort of saying that Pete getting caught is sort of a precursor to Don getting caught, and then when Don finally does get caught, that'll be the moment where he really has to sort of face. And he said, he said affliction. Well, I think, I think, yeah. He views it like like Don's a sex addict. Is that the? Yeah, it says that is when he'll be forced to. Who says that he isn't? To Uh truly confront his issues and cure his affliction. Mike August is is thought of, you know. I I gotta be honest, Mike. I don't see Don curing his affliction anytime soon. Uh, I I don't. uh, I wouldn't call it an affliction he cures his affliction every night yeah. he cures it good yeah. sometimes he cures it three four times right he's don draper god damn it yes. and last thing and last thing you know back to bob another bob benson t- thought he said you know when herb said to bob benson you must like you must be like a kid in the candy store around here uh candy meaning women uh not being able to enjoy just one again talking about don and pete's affairs there he's sort of like you know yeah. making reference to that mm-hmm. so, so 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 mike august is guy i like, like that mike august is coming at, at, at more of a Sort of a, a t- taking more of a cerebral um, sort of like uh, you know what those are looking for uh, off the beaten path sure. sort of approach. I can't think of the word. I'm looking Whatever for. it is, it's out here. It's it's out here in <laughs> the know, forest off the beaten uh, path. Off the, it's uh, he's taking more of a I don't know. 
esoteric approach to this. Yes. That's a great word. He's, he's looking for theme. He's looking for subtext. And yes. we appreciate what he And with this show, the show. Uh, you, can go, you can go deep. Right. Uh, oh, whoa, I hear, whoa, I hear whoa, music. Whoa. Predictions? Can we get predictions? I'm Dude, sorry. There is nothing you can predict. I got <laughs> predictions. Wait, wait, okay, go, go around the room, say one word each, and there you go. That's just <laughs> okay, 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 any one word each. One word each. Right. Braswell. Oh. Or sense, phrase, whatever. Okay. Oh, my God. Uh, I, I, I think that... Uh, uh, Cosgrove and, and Cosgrove and, uh, and um, Harry. Harry are going to leave and start their own agency. Go, Benson. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of anything. Sorry. All right, John. I, I think Roger Sterling and Joan are going to hook up again soon. Maybe I really? just hope. I just hope so. I love them together. Well, See, fat, the point, the, well the, fat Betty Lisa White. The, the, the point of the exercise was to make up something random, yeah. just like right. the teaser. Okay. Got okay. It. Got right. It. Like. Gosh, I feel hungry. Don't you love the teasers? Yeah. I, I love the teasers every week. It's so seconds. goofy. So yeah. random. Joe Flippo, where can we find you, uh, You can find me at Joe Flippo uh, on the Twitters. You can also find me uh, right here at After Buzz on uh, I Do the Following with Joe Braswell. I, I also love that do, show. Yeah, I know, right? It's so good. And we also do the Bates Motel and the wow, American. Wow, you're doing all the creepy stuff. All the creepy stuff. <laughs> Where's the bad man? you seen this guy? <laughs> and, of course, the bad man. <laughs> you can look at this guy? <laughs> Sorry. Catherine? Uh, I'm at, on Twitter and Instagram at my name, which is K-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E-T-U-L-I-C-H. And I believe I'll be back next week also with Phil for Revenge, right? That's right. Nice. Yes. Ooh. Matthew Great. Lieberman. All right, you can find me on Twitter at, at Matt Lieberman, M-A-T-T-L-I-E-B-E-R-M-A-N. You can also find me on AfterBuzz on two sci-fi shows, on Doctor Who and uh -huh. on Defiance, which oh, starts taping this week. Yeah. On Doctor Ooh. what? Doctor Who. Ooh. I'm sorry, Doctor all right, who's, who's, uh, who's on first? Right. That's terrible. You, I mean, know. you can find I'm Joe K. Braswell. Joe Braswell. You can find me at Joe K. Braswell on Twitter and here in After Buzz with the following with, jo with uh, Joe Flippo and also what is it? Uh, Base Motel. Base Motel. <laughs> Grantland.com and Extra. Thank you very much. We will see you next week. Thank you. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff. We would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, see you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.